All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started, and a few more right, will join us shortly. Uh, I wanted to wish you all a wonderful, glorious, somewhat sunny spring morning from here in Seattle. Uh, I'm joined today by a few colleagues. Oops. Let's see if I can uh, pull their screens up. There we go. Uh, so my name is Jennifer. We've probably met before. If we have not, it's lovely to meet you. I'm joined by Rich. Rich, if you'd like to say a quick hello. Good morning, everyone. And uh, Rich has been on a few calls with us recently. He's a solutions consultant here at AppSheet. And then we also are joined today by Santiago. Santiago, if you'd like to say a quick hello and tell us a little about yourself. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Santiago. I work with the product team uh, at AppSheet. So I, I used to join webinars a few you know, years ago, and I'm very happy to be back in one of these webinars. Excellent. And we're happy to have you back. Um, we are still working from home right now, so uh, you may hear my co-host, Roxy, if you've been on the past few webinars, uh, she's made an appearance. So um, I apologize, but I do not apologize for her cuteness if, if you hear some of her commentary during our next hour together. Uh, we do have a few other dogs that might be joining the call from uh, Santiago's end as well. Uh, and Rich, do you have a dog? Uh, no, I do not. Uh, just, okay. Just a seven-year-old, so you might hear okay. him. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So um, th that's actually a, a good um, item to note uh, because we are working from home. There might be delays in either connections, volume, or audio. We apologize in advance if that happens. Please give us a little bit of grace, and we'll work through it and troubleshoot the best way um, we can as we move forward. All right. Uh, so. As discussed previously, uh, we wanted to do a special office, office hours today dedicated to a few topics that are requested quite a bit. Uh, so we just did a quick introduction. Um, I'll touch on a few additional resources that are available for educational purposes. And then we're going to cover three really important fundamentals for working with AppSheet and we'll do Q&A throughout, uh, but we'll also have a dedicated section at the end for questions we're not able to address as we proceed. Uh, so today's three items that we're going to touch on are slices, security filters, and user rules. You've had a lot of great questions about it. We're gonna do the best we can to address as many as we can during this time. Uh, if we are unable to get to it, or if you have questions you'd like addressed uh, as we go, highly encourage you to post a comment or a question in that community thread that we've uh, listed out for you in the question box. All right. Oh, a few people are saying they can't see the screen. So you should be seeing a page that says new to the platform. Can you folks see that at all? Uh, no. No, okay. Jenny. No. Let's see why that is. What can you see? Maybe that's the better question. Just a header of the of the webinar, AppSheet Office Hours Organizer AppSheet Team. Okay, can go. you see it now? All right. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So this is your lovely crew that we just went over. We're gonna pretend the last couple minutes didn't happen and we're gonna move <laughs> forward. All right. Now we see Roxy, which is great. You see Roxy. Yeah. Um, all right, so agenda, which we just talked about, let's get into it. So uh, I did just mention the uh, community thread for this particular uh, conversation or office hour session, if you will. Uh, there's more than just office hours commentary posted in this community space, however. Uh, we have tens of thousands of app creators that post different questions, help source solutions, What's great about this space is you get a diverse thought uh, when it comes to approaching a solution. So I highly uh, recommend everyone check out this section of the AppSheet universe uh, for help, information, news and updates, things like that. Uh, Santiago, Rich, did you have anything you'd like to add about this space? Oh, I was uh, just, oh, go ahead, go ahead Rich. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a helpful platform. Um, I'll often post some tips and tricks on there as well. Um, so feel free if you got questions or anything like that. We have a great community that'll help yeah. you get started. Yeah, and one thing that I've noticed is that every time I have a question about a specific pattern 
on AppSheet applications, there's a very high chance that somebody has done something similar, maybe for a different industry or for a different type of role, but a similar pattern. So it's good to join the community and ask the question. Somebody may be able to just quickly help you because they've gone, kind of gone through the same. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. So one other resource I like to point out, speaking of the AppSheet community, is that we do also have uh, non-English resources that are starting to surface and be crowdsourced in that space as well. I know for a lot of you, English either might not be a first language or you work with customers in other geographic locations where English is not a first language and they need additional resources that our team has not produced. This is a good space to either contribute your own non-English first resources or access those for your geographic region. This section is always growing, so I highly encourage you to check it out. I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to post a link to this in our office hours thread for today for those of you who would like to reference it. Um, one other note I'll just add to this is we do have a dedicated section of our forum for a COVID-19 response. We're offering a special program for all applications developed for COVID-19 response use cases. Um, you can also see what our community has been building and how they've been helping uh, with what's happening globally. So I highly encourage uh, to check out that space as well to see what's been happening. All right, so um, I mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about a couple of fundamentals to the AppSheet product, so slices, security filters, and user roles. Um, so actually, rather than me talk at you with a lot of this, and we'll get into some details in a moment, um, Rich, would you actually like to do a quick overview of what these three items are? Yes. So um, we'll, we'll start first by uh, talking about slices. So. Um, these are these are ways to basically filter any any table table data uh, with a certain formula of your desire. Say you want to you know want to pull values at a status column for for items that are marked complete. You would create slices to basically reduce the data that would show in any particular view, and um, use this formula to set that up. Um, and then you could attach any view uh, that you make in AppSheet to those slices. So, you know, typically basic default functionality is you could attach, when views are created, you could attach them to tables, but slices give you the exact same functionality of essentially making a duplicate table, but um, it's obviously not duplicate data, it's all pulling from the same table, but um, slices act just like another table was added uh, to your app. Um, so you can control, you know, the user experience um, and then moving down to security filters. Security filters are a way um, to control what data actually gets downloaded to the devices of, of the users. So think about it as the first pass when your apps are syncing, you can reduce load times, you get, you know, for security purposes too, that's why they're called security filters, reduce any uh, or remove any of the data that you don't want any particular users to see. So that'd basically be the first pass of, of how data comes into your app. And then users roles um, is, a, is some functionality in AppSheet that's, you look at it two ways. One is the basic default functionality, which there's an admin and a user aspect to every app that you could set internally, or you could expand that to basically create multi-dimensional user roles uh, using another table in, in your AppSheet app as well. And uh, just to piggyback on the three um, kind of overviews that Rich just provided, the reason we grouped these three um, topics together is they're, some of them have similar functionality, but the way in which it's either approached is very different or they are actually all three different uh, items completely. And so we want to compare and contrast uh, what those differences and similarities are as we proceed. Uh, Santiago, did you have anything else that you wanted to add to this overview? No, this is a very good overview. I think it's key for people to identify which of these options are most beneficial based on the needs of the application. Uh, the names are not exactly the same, but for the end user of the app, it may actually look like the same thing to them. So it's really more about the use case. Right, that's a really good point. Uh, all right, let's get into slices. 
There we go. All right, so as Rich mentioned, uh, slices can really be used to help determine um, UX view types. It's a way to expose or hide um, specified data. And I apologize, there's a lot of banging uh, above me right now from my neighbors. So <laughs> bear with me for just a moment. We cannot hear it, so it's fine. You okay, can, okay. Can't. <laughs> okay, good, good. I'm, I'm glad that's not um, echoing in, in my headphones. All right, so uh, slice definitions have roughly um, have a handful of components. The table it's based on, uh, which Richard Santiago, correct me if I'm wrong, that's required. And does the slice permit adds, um, deletes, or updates? Those two, first two items are required. Uh, the next two items pointed out here, the subset of columns that retains to the table and the subset of actions, those are both optional, correct? I was muted, yes, that is correct. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So at, at a very high level, you always want to, like the requirement is to decide which rows are going to be presented. So you always are defining that. You either show every possible row or you show a subset of rows and that rule you need to define. Uh, defining columns or defining actions or even how the data is going to be accessed uh, is defined as an optional uh, it's, it's an optional thing. Actually, yeah. the, the how data is going to be accessed is not optional. Uh, the default will be a read-only type of, of table, meaning that people can only read it, uh, but it, it, there's an option always going to be selected there. And it's going to be more clear if you see it inside of the application, so we can point at those options there too. Yeah, it, uh, to kind of expand on that, it, you know, you could make a, a essentially a copy. Your slides could be exactly the same as your table, and then you could add all those little different options and control, you know, how your data is showing up, all the way up to restricting it completely. Great. Thank you for that added information, gentlemen. Uh, all right, so we're gonna jump into one of these sample apps available in the AppSheet sample app portfolio. I've mentioned this resource uh, in a few of our previous um, office hour sessions, but this is, a, a, again, I, I wanna highlight here, a really great place to source um, how to work with functionality or features in a singular capacity, as well as rich complex applications. So for slices, we're going to focus just on this functionality, and then later in this session, we'll focus on a, a larger, uh, more complex application that leverages some of this capability. All right, so for this particular app, uh, since it's a sample app, we can either copy and customize or we can look under the hood. Uh, Rich and Santiago, which would you prefer? Do you want to copy and customize, build our own, essentially build our own application, or do you want to look under the hood for this? I'm a, I'm a big proponent of copying and customizing just to make sure that we All can right. also, let's say, break the app as we work through this. All right, so Example. in this choose choose your own adventure, um, we're gonna copy and customize. So hold on to your seats, everyone. We're gonna build an app. <laughs> so we 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 have our name, how to use slices. We'll say part two, and then category we can assign other. Um, I would highly recommend that you assign what you um, the type of use case you're building your application for. In this case, since it's a demonstration, we'll click on other, and then we'll click copy the app. So uh, right now. We're building uh, an application. Jennifer, while this is being copied, uh, are there any questions uh, at this point that anybody's asking? Just checking on that. Uh, I do have a couple of questions, none relevant. Uh, right. None are none are um, none quite. We're not quite there yet for these. Okay, all right. We'll go for questions then down the road. Okay. All right. So we just built an application. Uh, it may be a copy of a sample application, but we still built our own application nonetheless. If I was to go into um, my app section, you would see this as a standalone app. So for this particular application, you have your data section here, which is where it automatically dumped us off in. If we were to click on data, it would expand so we get a better view uh, of what we're working with here. Um, we could click view the source and it would take us back to the original or the copied source that now lives in our data source. And you can see this is a very simple singular table three column application. 
by, by the way, that is my favorite trick. Just like whenever you have an application, you have that view source link, which is going to take you to the original data source directly. If it's a Google Sheet or like a file that it can be opened. If it's a database connector, then it won't be able to open it. So it'll just show you a, a, like a browser window with the data that it can see. But in this case, it took you back directly to the to the actual spreadsheet that is powering that application. Yeah, I, I think that's a really powerful um, thing to point out too. This is especially useful um, when it's sample applications in your own organization that you copy over to. Mm -hmm. Just always like to highlight that. Um, all right, perfect. So in terms of how this app works, um, and for those that are new to, to AppSheet in general, um, a couple of items to point out. We are now in the AppSheet editor. The left-hand side here is going to be your navigation space. This section here in the center is what we're working with, which right now is data and tables. It's a cross-reference, excuse me. And then on the right-hand side here, this is our emulator. And this is a real-time way to view what's happening with this application. So the slices that this particular app has carved out um, are the blue slices, the red slices, the no number slices, and then there's the option to sync as well. It's pretty straightforward. Um, when we look at the data source itself, you can see that we're organized by row here. So red, blue, red, blue, and that's essentially how this data is sliced out and viewed in the application over here. So so Jennifer, maybe one, one thing to, to point at, at uh, the people learning here on the call, uh, one place where you want to start seeing which slices are available in your app is the slices tab in in that menu. So you have tables, columns, and slices. One thing that I also I, I think is important for people to understand is uh, when you talk about slices, you're talking about that filtered view of the data in the device. So what you see on the right, as Jennifer was pointing, that is a live emulation of the application. So when you see just blue in the app on the right, uh, that is just showing the blue the things that are called blue inside of the inside of the application but technically for the app all of the rows have been downloaded to the device so what you're seeing is just that filter view from data that lives inside of the device so when you think about slices you're thinking about sending all of the rows available in the table to the device and then inside of the application you decide which ones to show right <laughs> Correct. And for this particular slice of data, we used a row filter condition of the color blue. And that's taking advantage of our expressions. Uh, and I will post, and I don't know that we'll have time to cover this portion super, really deep, but I'll, pour, I'll post a few uh, support articles yeah. um, for this here. And just a mini walkthrough of what this did is, if you go back to the spreadsheet, uh, Jennifer, if that's if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a column called color, right? So the, in the color column, uh, sorry, in the in the in the column called color, there's the options red, blue, red, blue, right? So if you go back to the application, what that formula was just saying was, um, if you could switch back to the the slices part two, yes, and click on that formula, you see that color is in brackets because that's the name of the column, right? So the color column equals to a specific value. In this case, the value is blue. So there's two ways to present that value. It's uh, as it's presented right now, or sometimes in, in double quote marks around it, if it's a specific type of text for AppSheet to recognize. That means that AppSheet is going to go through the whole data that is downloaded on the device, and it's going to check if it matches the that particular statement. Does it say blue? And if, if it does, then it belongs in that slice. If it does, if it doesn't match, then it's it's just excluded. Correct. And and uh, this no number would be a good item to see. There's no row filter condition here, and we do also have a similar um, row filter condition for red, as well. Mm -hmm. Rich, anything to add to this uh, portion of slices? Yeah, you know, just um, you know what helped me try to understand this uh, early on when I was learning app sheet was. When you're when you're creating a formula a filter condition, think about that. AppSheet goes through each row and evaluates that record as a, a, a yes or no, essentially, on whether it's going to show it um, through the filter or not. 
So it's fairly easy to understand when the formulas are, are simple like this, but if you make more complex formulas, just kind of be in that mindset that, okay, how is AppSheet going to evaluate this? Is this, you know, is this output going to be a, a true or false, essentially, for each record? Right, thank you. Um, and just to add to that, since we touched on um, the view component portion of this earlier, in addition to the data functionality, this little blue dot here next to the UX item on the left-hand corner, that's an indication that this is a section to work with as well. Um, and these view types just display or will list how your data for that particular slice is being, being presented in your application for your end user as well. And we've, uh, we've done a couple of different office hours on UX view types and we have some great documentation. There's a lot of different view types and, and we'll save that for a future uh, discussion if you folks would like. All right. Yeah, one, one last thing on, on slices. As I, I kind of mentioned earlier that these slices will function just like a table in the perspective of app sheets. So that also carries over to um, your, your workflow roles or report uh, uh, scheduled reports, stuff like that. You can always reference um, a slice just as you would a table as well. And that's actually segue into a great question. Um, so we have a question coming in on um, the numbers of tables you can use, and it's simply, can I build a slice based upon multiple tables? So the, the short answer for that one, if I can jump in, is that no, you wouldn't be able to, some people call that a join, but you're joining two tables and you're putting that as a slice. Uh, you wouldn't be able to that, do that on AppSheet, at least today. You would still want to expose a slice as a subset of rows of one particular table uh, at a time. So you can have multiple tables on AppSheet. You can have multiple slices per table but you wouldn't be able to create one slice that combines data from two tables. That type of join would need to be happen, would need to happen at the data source level. Yeah, um, you, you could, you can create, uh, this is not, not included in the slice functionality, but more, this is more of a virtual columns topic. Um, you could essentially create um, virtual columns that would, basically act as a join from certain tables. But yeah, like Santiago said, it's it's not, you're not gonna get that full functionality that you would in um, a, a database, yeah. with, you know, cross joins and stuff like that. Yeah. Jennifer, I had a couple of tips and suggestions for people working with slices. Uh, yeah, go for I it. Those? Awesome. Absolutely. So, so, so uh, tip number one. So if you can, if you can switch back to the app definition, so this is something that happened to me a lot in the past is when you create a, a slice, it doesn't necessarily automatically get mapped to a particular view in your application, right? It's just sitting there. It's just not being used. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you create the slice and you think that it's automatically going to be exposed in whatever view you already had available. So that's not the case. You still want to go to UX, find the view you want to modify it or create the new one. And when you see this line saying for this data, make sure you pick the slice that you want to show. Sometimes the app is just not doing what you want it to do. And, and in many cases, it has to do with not selecting the slice at that particular, uh, that particular moment. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is think about the access to the data at the slice level. So if you go to back to data and then slice, Oh, see, I'm playing with UX view types now. I know. Um, <laughs> <and data. laughs> go back to data and then slice. Uh, when you look at this, at the definition of the slice and you scroll down, you see that there's this update mode option that says you can do updates, adds, deletes, or read only for that particular table. That means that that's what people can do on that particular table directly, right? Uh, for database people, that's your what we call CRUD operations, right? Create, read. Uh, uh, update or delete, right? So that's pretty much what we're showing here. That means that if you create a slice and you make it read only, when people go into, into that slice in that view, the only thing they'll be able to do is read the data. They won't be able to update it. They won't be able to delete it. They won't be able to add new data, as you can see here. If you go to that view, uh, if you can go to this, the blue slice if it, uh, uh, or the red view, Jennifer, we can show a quick example. Uh, are you that, referring to UX or? Both actually. So in just blue right now, you see that it's read only. But what if you wanted people to just edit the data to do uh, updates? 
you would have to go and select the updates, right? And then save your app definition. And that would make that uh, that particular um, view that has the blue available for edits. So if you click on any record, you should be able to edit the record, right? Before it was just read only. Now the trick here though, is that the, the type of update mode can only reach whatever is the update mode of the underlying data. That sounds confusing, but let me just point it in a different way. If you go to the table itself, so if you go to tables, instead of slices, you'll notice that the data table can only allow updates, ads, and that's it, right? So if I go back to my slice and say, I'm going to allow deletes out of my data, that is not possible. It's not possible because the underlying table does not let you delete data. So the slice cannot delete data either, right? So that's also a source of confusion sometimes where you're trying to make decisions on your table. The maximum rights of the slice are going to be the rights of the underlying table itself. It cannot, uh, it cannot beat the rights of the updates of the underlying table. Uh, it, that's something that we've seen people also falling in that kind of pattern, right? Like they have a read-only table as the source, and then they want people to update the slice. The only way they can update the slice is by changing the underlying table to allow updates as well. Perfect. Great, thank you for those tips, Santiago. No. Just, uh, Rich, did you have anything to add? Yeah, if, if you fall into that where, just in general with AppSheet, if you find that AppSheet seems to be undoing stuff that you do, for example, if we were to you know, select deletes in the slice as an option, and when you saved it you and the uh, editor refreshed, you'll notice that wouldn't be selected anymore. Always go to your info section in AppSheet and there will most likely be a, a warning message that that'll show on exactly why AppSheet did what it did as far as removing it and kind of help you troubleshoot you know that that step let's see if we can throw an error really quickly oh. all right so okay. can't throw an error no, that, so, one, that one actually won't let you. That one actually will automatically remove the option that that is not possible. So it won't break and, the app because the app is just saying, oh, no, you, you, you made a mistake. I would just don't let you delete because it's impossible to delete in the slice. Isn't in, in the info in, in the info tab, isn't there a message in there? There's, um, there's, there's, error? This, is, this no? is like a monumental moment. The, the one moment oh. we need an error message, we can't get it to trigger. Mm. You, can, you can force you can force other error messages. Yeah, but that's that one true. Is, uh, mm. I, what I what I what I want to right. <laughs> automatically just will it will remove that option altogether. If you want it to delete, you have to change the underlying data. Okay. Shoot, yeah. I thought we used to have a warning message when that did that. Yeah. The, the quickest way to generate an error, uh, if you want to show that, Jennifer, is by going into data, going into columns, and write a, oh, yeah. an invalid formula in the form. We'll, the... we'll be we'll be able to trigger a few error messages here, <laughs> really, really soon. Um, yeah. It's just the, the platform is so intelligent; it now knows how to correct our uh, our some of our our more um, common errors that we were throwing. Uh, all right, so I've got a couple of questions here um, regarding slices. I'd like to throw at you, gentlemen. Um, let's see. Can we slice data based on a sheet in a worksheet? Um, can data be shown from multiple sheets of a Google sheet? So a, a two-parter for you. Uh, Rich Santiago, who'd like to, to start? So if I'm... I'll go ahead, Rich. So if I'm understanding that correctly, I, I, um, I guess there's two ways that I'm interpreting that question. One is, can you have multiple sheets from the same workbook in AppSheet? And yes, you can. You can basically, when you're when you go to add a new table um, to AppSheet, you you select your workbook, and then you are taken to a list to select individual sheets. Yeah. Now, I guess the other the other part. Uh, Sorry, can I interrupt yeah. for a second? Yeah. Uh, can we actually do this? Uh, for the people that are fairly new to the platform, I think this is a, it's a good pattern to show. Uh, sure. uh, Jennifer, can you go to data and add a new tab to that particular worksheet? And let's just put yeah. some data in it. So go data, the data is a Google Sheet, sorry. Data in the original data yeah. source? Yeah, and, and, add a new add tab? A new tab. and let's just put some data in it. So like names, <laughs> can I just put Jennifer Rich in Santiago? <laughs> yeah. 
Close Santiago, I've, nope, there we go, okay. okay. So that's, now we have a new data set. We're going to imagine that the person that asked this question has a significant large, larger data set than this, but just let's assume that this is big enough for now. So there's a new tab called Sheet 1, right? You can go back now to that application. And one thing that I suggest we do actually is just reload this page. So AppSheet can kind of reread the connection that it has. Right, so a couple of things you'll notice. There's that one, and please don't click on that menu there though. So there's an option now to say, add a table for sheet one. That's the new tab that we have. So AppSheet automatically finds the new tab and says, do you wanna add it into your application? So you're gonna get that option. But you can also go into add new table directly, that button on the left, click on it. It'll give you the, the from the existing data source, it'll, it'll give you options to find uh, what you have available. So you can like browse for more data, uh, click on Google, trying to find that uh, data file there, just call it data. Like if you type in the word data in that search option, you should pop up. There it is. I'm gonna say the first one. And then the worksheet that you wanna select, right? That's that. But what you also saw is that it will let you select another file that is available to be added into the application. So you can add multiple tabs, but you can also bring tabs from multiple files into this. One, one other item that's important to note here is data, which we've already been working with, is grayed out because it's already been assigned. So Correct. it will only let you add on the new data sources or tables within that source. Correct. Yep. In, in theory, you could have apps that are connected to a spreadsheet, a database, a calendar, all, all many different data sources um, at the same time. Mm -hmm. So now there's an automatic view called Sheet 1, which will have our names if you go into the emulator, and you'll see it there. So that's how you add more tables. The second part of the question, Rich, did it, it sounded to me like it was also some sort of a join kind of question. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was going into. I was gonna say for for the second interpretation of that, it sounded like um, you were asking for a type of join functionality, which actually doesn't fully support. You could do some limited join ideas using virtual columns that reference other tables, um, but you're not going to get that that full functionality that you might be useful for uh, yeah. joining multiple tables together. Yeah, there's, there's, here's a quick tip, and it is, it, I know that we're going to talk about like this model in a different webinar, but now that we have two tables, we can actually say uh, for every potential, so if you go and click on any of the fields, Jennifer, Richard, Santiago, you know there, there are three empty columns there, right? One, one is called one and the other is called two, I believe, right? So if you click on edit for that particular record, you have one and two. Uh, what if one was actually an option to select one of the rows from the other table, right? Like I want to pick one of the other pay table from the data. Uh, to do that, that is one version of not the join, but what we call a reference between tables. You're just making a relational database. And to achieve that, you just only go to data, then columns, and change the column type for that sheet one, the column called one. And instead of text, you will call it ref. And in that reference, you're going to make a reference to click on the uh, on the pencil for that particular. Uh, see, there's a warning. No, that's perfect. You, you triggered one. You just need to go into <laughs> that edit and then select <laughs> select the table you want to point at, right? And in that case, it's going to be the table. And our source table. Got it. And it might be because the other table has... Um, uh, it's not an ideal table to show this because that was not that we did not make that slice demo to be a, a, a properly built out table there, but it's just a good example to see how this looks. So you're good, yeah. So if you click on the one drop down on the right, you see it there, and now in the application, it has the options that were in that data table. Now those were the 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 ten options from the other table. So that's a way of thinking through not a specific, like a particular join, but more of a reference between tables where you're connecting the new table that we added with the uh, information from the other table. All right. All Hope right. Mm -hmm. 
And I've got a few more questions. So um, just for context and time, um, there's a few questions about show ifs, and we'll get to show if statements when we talk about user roles in a few moments. Um, we're gonna move on to security, and then a lot of these others we'll try to address at the end or on that thread in the community. All right, uh, security filters are up next. Um, so security filters are, a really fantastic addition to your applications. They do come uh, with a little caveat in which they can, if you have a really large data set, we don't always recommend working with security filters in this capacity and I'll let Rich and Santiago touch on that in a little bit more uh, in just a moment. Um, but security filters control what data is um, accessible on a user's devices. It's typically set with expressions. Uh, expressions cannot use virtual columns, which is something we talked about just a moment ago. Uh, a user's email address can filter the data shown to a particular user. There's also uh, quite a broad host of expressions you can use uh, for security filters as well. Uh, Rich and Santiago, any uh, additional preliminary concepts on security filters before we show an app? To me, it's my preferred way of ensuring better performance of the application if I have the right type of filter. Like assume you have 10,000 rows of tasks to be performed and each task is assigned to a particular user by their user email. Instead of showing the tasks to that user, by uh, downloading all of the 10,000 rows into the device and then doing a slice that would show the, the rows to that particular user, I would put in a security filter, which in turn is only going to download the tasks that were assigned to that user based on that filter. So you can think through, uh, you can see how that can improve the performance of your app. Just do not force everybody to download all of the data if you're just going to expose a subset of it. So from a performance perspective, it helps a lot um, uh, in terms of how the application uh, can run. And yeah, this, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Rich. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so think about when the security filter is, it's the app actually doing the query against the data source. So if you have a data source with millions and millions of records, but your security filter is set to only basically pull 20 records at a time, you know, based on the user, the app is only going to ever download those 20 records and will never need to deal with the millions of records that may already exist in that data source. So you get a much more, as Santiago was saying, a much more snappier app and, um, you know, responsive app for your users. And uh, Rich, what would you say is a critical uh, key difference between slices and security filters? Uh, yeah, I mean, the biggest critical difference is security filters prevent data from ever arriving on a user's device, whereas slices are, you know, basically sub partitions of data essentially within the data that already exists on the user device. Oh, well, hopefully you. that was, yeah, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. But yeah, it's just that, that's the biggest different difference. If you're building small scale apps, you probably wouldn't know the difference until you start to scale upwards to, you know, many different locations or many different users and you have large data sets, your security filters should be your first stop um, in trying to optimize your app. Great. Thank you for that. Because actually uh, will not, actually doesn't have any artificial restraints as far as you could only download 10,000 rows or, or stuff like that. You, you can you can set it up to try to pull millions and millions of rows. You'll just notice that your app doesn't, will just keep trying to sync until basically the memory, you know, on your device <laughs> exactly. comes overwhelmed. It'll, it'll time out. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, the connection will time out before you download everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right, perfect. So uh, before we jump into um, the app itself, I wanted to touch on user roles, um, and then we'll kind of address um, security filters, user roles, and a little bit of slices in the complex app we're going to show in just a moment. Uh, so user roles is a, I often refer to it, and Santiago and Rich correct me, um, if you feel it's appropriate, I often refer to it as a, a bucket um, 
or an approach to assigning uh, users classifications. And I, I call it a bucket or an approach because there's a few ways uh, in which you can execute this action. Uh, one of these is by using a user role expression, which is pretty limited in its capabilities. The other, which is the recommended method, is a user role table. And that allows for a slightly more diverse approach. I would argue, and Rich and I talked about this a little bit earlier, um, it's also a, a more solid approach to this, this concept. Um, it exposes content to users using show if statements, which we've had a few questions on, or excuse me, you can use show if statements for this um, based on logged in user roles. You can also use lookup expressions to expose um, certain content to certain users based on the, the logged in user and the role that's assigned to them. And I, I know that sounds like a lot of words coming at you at once, but we're gonna give you an example here in another one of our sample apps. And, uh, can, can I make a comment? See if Absolutely. It, uh, when you're thinking about user roles, you're at the end, you're just thinking about how do you classify the people that are using your application? So you can just provide a service to them, like the application services to them that are just for them, right? Meaning you're sending the data that they need to see. They don't need to get all of the data. They just need a subset of the data, right? They need to see the views that they need to see. They don't need to see all of the views. They just need to see the views that they are required to be able to perform the action that they have. So at the very high level, you want to think about user roles as a way of making the application services more customized to that particular user. And because the app sheet is data driven, you can make those choices based on the actual data itself, right? If you assign users to particular rows, or if you have a user table, all of those different choices are based on the data that you have for your app, um, which is also beneficial for your end user as well. All right, so right now we're making an app and it, it's kind of comical. Um, we've made this comment a few times on office hours in the past, um, but it often takes like 30 seconds to a minute or two, depending on how complex the sample is that app, app is that you're copying. Um, this is something that would take a developer, I don't know guys, a couple months to be able to build and I'm doing it uh, in about a minute and a half. Um, <laughs> so it's something to be mindful of when it comes to time. Uh, while this is loading, though, a couple of questions in the uh, community that have come through. So one is on actually topics that are selected for future office hours. Um, I, I'm, I'll tackle this really quickly. So great question. Um, we actually base these topics on, from a few or determine these topics from a few different sources. One are topics or questions that we find in our uh, community forum that are either super interesting there's a lot of activity around it a lot of users are asking for something similar so that's one way there's also direct outreach on our social channels or when we post the question uh, or excuse me when we announce that we're offering office hours um, at the end of this session today you're actually going to receive a survey that asks what topics you would like to see in future office hours so that'll be another channel in which you can add um, topics or requests for future sessions as well but it really comes down to what our audience is looking for what you app creators would like to see and that helps determine what we cover in these sessions all right so we just made an app um, or copied an app rather but still it's an app nonetheless and uh, let's Actually, you know what, um, Rich, do you have this app open on your end? Well, we That's just created that awesome. app, uh, Jennifer, so we, we wouldn't be able to have it open on our end just yet. Nope, okay, um, well, we will skip my, my uh, next comment then. <laughs> All right, so um, let's talk about, so just to recap, we talked about slices earlier which we have here. As you can see, this application houses a number of different slices and view types. If we were to go into and filter conditions, if we were to, to go into UX, we would see our primary views. And I think what's important to note in here is it'll list the data that it's pulling from, our menu views, and the reference views, which is something that um, we added in our previous application here. And then we can keep going for that. And um, 
couple of items to note about security filters, um, and gentlemen, correct me if I'm correct on this, uh, requiring user sign-in for um, users that need to be logged in. Is this a requirement for people using this functionality? So, so it's not a requirement for a security filter per se, unless your security filter requires the email of the user. So if you create a security filter that says, show me only the rows where the user email matches uh, the field in this table called email, right? In that case, you'd need to require the user sign in. But if your security filter is something like only show the rows where the date equals to today, right? Then you wouldn't need to sign in, but I don't know why you want to create an insecure app from the get-go, but but you wouldn't need to require a sign-in for all of your security filter needs. Uh, it really depend on, depends on the, the actual filtering condition. That is a very important point that Santiago just highlighted. We received a few questions about that. Um, I hope everybody bookmarks that uh, when we post the recording. Um, again, that's a very important uh, security comment, so thank you, Santiago, for that. Uh, all right, so moving forward. Um, so again, we're in the app editor. Our navigation bars on the left, the center area is what we're working with, emulators on the right. So we're under security. We've gone through the required sign-in. Now we're in security filters. So this particular application is leveraging what, five different security filters. Uh, gentlemen, which security filter would you like to start with? Um, yeah, so... So there's there's really only one security filter that's basically in the reports table. So when when you view, look at this view, what this view is showing you is is all the different tables that exist in the app um, that you've you've set up. Um, you could also find the security filters in the table view as well section. Jennifer, if you were to hop over to data um, and then go to table and expand one of the the tables. And you scroll down under the security section, the subsection of security there, you'll also find the security filter option um, associated with the table. You can find it in both places, but um, just wanted to kind of call that out. Um, Thank so, you for that. Yeah, um, but yeah, if we want to go back to the security section, right, um, you'll see here at a quick glance that demo modes, maintenance tickets, users, and job sites, they have no filters assigned. It says none. And then mm. you'll see that reports has a uh, fairly scary, scary looking one. Uh, so uh, my <laughs> suggestion is let's not go into that scary looking one because you'll see that yeah. it's kind of an Excel like formula, but it's long enough yeah. for us not to go to the whole formula yeah. right now. <laughs> it's it's probably not the best example. Your security yeah. filters don't need to be like that. Your security yeah. filters could be just like what we were showing earlier with the slice formulas, where color equals red or something like that, yeah. right? So can we try can we try before we actually don't let's not operate on that formula oh, my suggestion oh go ahead jennifer so uh, i was going to say why would you not want something this complex in a security filter well i i, I don't think that this, this is more just there, there's really no it's not going to hurt it depends on the function or you know what's being basically computed on the app sheet side um the more complex in general could actually take more time for your app to sync, depending on the situation. But um, I think I think just for demo purposes, it, it kind of um, I think that's why we're trying to avoid it. Right? Yeah. So yeah, our recommendation. I mean, you can do it. Like effectively, that is a is a more complex uh, formula that you're seeing there, right? And you can make more complex formulas. But for anybody on the call that has dealt with uh, complex formulas in Excel or Google Sheets, you know what happens when you have too many of them. When you have too many of them, when you force the app, your, your system to do a lot of calculations, the application will start to run slowly, right? So we give you the power to enter whatever you need based on your patterns. But at the same time, there's some sort of a, a, a tax that you have to pay with that, which is a performance tax, right? If you make very complex uh, operations, then your application will run slowly. Uh, a, quick, a good example of this is the, the VLOOKUP formula that you would probably have inside of your Google Sheet or your or, or Excel, right? If you do a VLOOKUP formula in multiple columns for thousands of rows, you will see that, it, that your computer will start to kind of hog processing power because you're pretty much asking Excel to read multiple times all of the rows in your table, right? And if there's some other <laughs> a row, column that depends on the previous column, 
it'll it just ex increases exponentially. So that's what we we suggest people to pay a lot of attention to the type of filtering that they want to put inside of their applications. You want to get to simple choices that a computer does not have to do a lot of calculations to arrive at a result, right? At the end, what you're asking in a security filter is for AppSheet to evaluate every row in your table and decide if it should be downloaded or not. So if your evaluation requires a lot of different calculations and dependencies, it's going to take it more time than if it's just like, is this blue or not blue? And that's it, right? So that's that's why you probably want to pay attention to the formulas. But again, that one is there and you can write a, a lot more complex formulas if you want to. It's just that there's a, a penalty on performance. Perfect. And uh, that's actually what I was I was trying to get at too is um, you can be as simplistic or as complex as you would like. Just know that there is a trade-off if you choose to run a really complex formula as both Santiago and Rich mentioned. It could potentially slow down your application. Um, Rich mentioned this as well. It doesn't have to be really complex. It can actually be really simple and we'll, we'll try to do a quick walkthrough of that right now. Um, so gentlemen, I've selected, we talked about user roles a little bit a moment ago. Uh, I selected the um, user's table mm -hmm. as a potential security filter. Does that sound like a good plan? That sounds, that sounds perfect. Can we look at the data then? So uh, just let's look at the spreadsheet that powers this particular table. Let's see how it looks. And we, yeah, have, the new, we have the trick, exactly. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So right. my suggestion before we do that, so you see we have eight possible rows uh, and none of them is Jennifer at AppSheet, right? Which I believe is how your user is. So maybe change one of those users to Jennifer at, at AppSheet. So we have one that is you. All right. And let's pretend that we're just going to expose the users and just show like you, you <laughs> in, in as, a, as a filter. So that not like just to show the one row that belongs to you. So we can go back to the application and create a security filter. All right, All right gentlemen. Um, so talk me through this. So our All users right. who haven't seen this before have, a, have a good guide. So first option I would do is I would go to columns because I don't, I never memorize the columns of my tables. And then I'll find the one that contains the email, which I believe is their email. So I'll click on insert for that email column. Right uh, on the right, perfect. And right now, AppSheet already knows like, okay, this is really not working. So we'll say email equals, because you need an expression that says yes or no, like something that a computer can analyze and say, this is true or not true, right? And then you would insert the placeholder function on AppSheet to, to call the email of the user that, of that application, which is user, not, not actually that, but user email, the word user email in all caps open and close parentheses. No, open and close parentheses, uh, Jennifer, sorry about that. So that's a, that's a bracket. That's, that's my bad. And at the very end, so it removed the, the first parentheses on the left and just in, at the very end of user email, just open and close. There you go. So that at the end, actually should say, yeah, this is an expression that I can evaluate. Does the value in the email column matches what I know to be the user's email of this app. Because if the person is signed into the application, I know their email, right? So that's what AppSheet is going to do. You can test it now. So if you click on that test option, it's gonna pull a new window and show you what this would do. So you see that every row is being evaluated and it's saying, Derek at Brickling Holdings, nope. John, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. And there's only one that actually matches, which is Jennifer. And if you click on that little tree graphic that you see there, you actually can see the process of that calculation. First, it gets the email column, right? Then it fetches the, the user email, and then it evaluates if the two match, then it's true. This is very easy for a computer to do, but you start to see how if you add more and more and more calculations, uh, you will, you, you're pretty much forcing the system to do a lot more calculations than you, than, than you probably should. It depends really on your needs, right? But this is how you can quickly see the results of your for, of your expression before you even test it out. So you, now you can hit save. You see that 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 you get the right result, and that's it. That what this is doing is that it's filtering out every row in that user table and just showing the ones where uh, Jennifer at AppSheet.com is written in the email column.
the way to show that you would have to expose a view that contains that particular list of users. So you would have to go into your uh, the UX. There you go. That's the users table. That's perfect. You want to sync that. You want to save and sync. From the side, yeah, that's it. The side that's side menu one. there. Yeah, you can already see the difference here. There's not a big long list any longer. Yeah, yeah it's just the one row that has your email. If you go, yep. if you if you want to make it crazy, I don't know if that was the key, by the way, but you could go back to the to the spreadsheet that you were looking at before. This is how I want to show like this in reality. So that happens to be your your key. So I wouldn't do that change then. But if you think about it, if you replace every row for the word Jennifer <laughs> at appsheet.com, you should be able to see all of those emails back again. But that's the key. Oh no, it is, yeah, that's the key. So you don't want to have duplicates as the as the key of your table. You want them always to be unique. So so yeah, this this also highlights um, some functionality as as your apps get more and more complex, and you you might come in with a new requirement where you might want to open up your app to a whole different set of users, uh, different user roles and stuff like that. And simply placing a formula in a security filter based off of what type of user it will affect the data across all your different views and all your different slices, and only ever show what you intend for that user role to see. So you wouldn't have to, it basically saves you all that time. Um, you wouldn't have to go individually configure each slice or view in an app. You would simply just make the change in a security filter and then AppSheet takes care of the rest for you. Yeah. Excellent. So, so there's a question in the community, Jennifer. It says, is the security filter evaluated for every single user actions in the system? Um, that's a very good question. So. AppSheet is designed to work offline. So there's always going to be like a downloaded version of the data and the application definition on the user's device. Uh, the, the security filter is going to be invoked every time you try to sync back to the server. So while you're using the app and you're disconnected, the security filter, it's not going to run. It's just going to use the data that's available locally. If you need to go and sync back again, then that security filter is going to be invoked. So for example, if my action was to switch views, for example, or my action was to do uh, a form submission uh, without having to call the security filter, that's going to be fine, and the sync is going to happen in the background. So it's evaluated every time you sync, not every time the application is kind of being used. Awesome. Thank you, Santiago. Uh, and one more item just to note, um, kind of two points ago, when Santiago was, we were walking through the data and he kept referencing a key in your data source for those that are new to AppSheet, uh, you can find this key area that he's referring to in the column section of data, it's right here. And this email um, that we were just working with is marked as the key, um, which is why you wouldn't want every single column to say Jennifer at AppSheet for that. I just yeah. wanted to highlight that there. Um, all right, so a couple more questions. We have just another moment or two left. Let's see if I can get one more. Uh, we touched on this just a moment ago, um, but how do I make user authentication and be able to see data for a specific user or user group? Richard Santiago, would either of you like to give a yeah, quick can, answer? Can you repeat the question? Sorry, I, I couldn't hear you well. Can you, can you repeat the question? Yeah. Um, how do I make a user authentication and be able to see data for a specific user or user group? Uh, we, we just did kind of an overview of this, but would either of you like to provide a, a quick, succinct answer? Yeah. I, I think the pattern we, we just described would, would provide that for you. You just want to make sure that uh, every table that you want to expose just for a particular user group or a particular user has that the ability to be filtered on that particular condition. So in this case, you would want to go into the, um, let's, uh, if you go back to the spreadsheet for this particular application for reports, you see that if you go to uh, maintenance tickets, right, the maintenance tickets uh, sheet, you see that the created by column is actually an email column, right? 
So you would want to create a filter condition on this table as well that says, I hey, only show the 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 in the created by filter only when the user email equals right the email of the user, right? So created by and that would be in square brackets equals user email. In that case, it's just going to filter everything out and just show you the ones that belong in this example to jennifer at appsheet.com. So that's how you would uh, filter everything else. So you want to make sure that you have the ability to filter based on whatever uh, condition it is on the whatever table you have in your application. Excellent. Thank you for that, Santiago. And I will make certain to post a few of our support articles on user emails. We talked about virtual columns today, slices, um, and a few of these sample apps in the thread on the community. Uh, we are at the end of our session today. I want to say a quick thank you to everyone for joining. If there is anything outstanding we have not addressed, uh, please post on that thread and we'll do our best to follow up as quickly as possible. And a recording from today's session will be posted within the next 24 hours. Um, I hope that this kind of intro plus a few advanced tips and tricks on working with security filters, slices, and user roles was helpful for everyone. I know there's been a lot of requests for this topic, and if you want to touch on this in future sessions, we certainly can. Uh, Rich and Santiago, thank you so much. Any closing notes you'd like to make? So uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. It's always fun to be in, in this kind of type of conversation. So uh, I would love to join all the conversations, both for more advanced topics and kind of uh, kind of getting started with actually topics. I just want to call out the uh, the people that have been posting questions in uh, for this office hours and thank you so much for your questions. There's some that we will we weren't able to address, like there's some X Y map questions there, some other ones about security filters and crowd operations. Uh, we'll make sure that we get through those questions and answer them inside of the community as well. So thank you for posting those questions and and thank you for joining the call. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having me on. And um, yeah, I'll be in the community after this, uh, you know, tackling those questions for you. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Roxy, as well, for being a good co-host today. Mm -hmm. I think she went to go take a nap. Uh, stay safe and we'll see you all on the AppSheet Creator community, everyone.